So there is a serious risk of a, of a double dip recession. I think it can be avoided, but it's perhaps the biggest challenge for policymakers in the rich countries is how they withdraw this extraordinary stimulus, both in fiscal and monetary policy, uh, and do that in a way that doesn't lead to a, a, second, a second recession, a double dip. Um, at the very least, I think it's quite likely that there'll be some weakening of economic growth towards the end of the year and into next year. So the United States, for example, as the stimulus starts to be withdrawn, is probably going to uh, see its growth perhaps dip a little bit. But the hope is that it can be managed so that it won't be actually dipping back into an outright recession. I think that's possible. There are a number of reasons why Spanish unemployment is particularly high. One is the, uh, the, the bust that you experienced in Spain in the construction industry, which of course has put a lot of people out of work. Secondly, a, a, a big loss of competitiveness over the years um, during Spain's um, boom and its membership of the euro, while other countries were uh, restraining wages and becoming more competitive, particularly Germany. Spain was gradually seeing its competitiveness eroding. And the third reason is the particular structure of the, the labour market where you have uh, some workers who've been on um, short-term contracts very easy to lay off and others who have had their uh, longer-term contracts, fixed contracts, who have remained in their jobs. So you've seen a very rapid shedding of the workforce that's been relatively easy to, to, to lay off. So what to do about it is a real dilemma. I think uh, clearly there have to be labor market reforms. That's the essential uh, element. And also there has to be um, great restraint in, in wages to restore Spanish competitiveness. And of course, that's politically extremely challenging. Perhaps uh, let me highlight one big trend and one at least one big event. So the trend I think that really feeds into many other trends is the rise of China and the growing importance of China in the world. So if you look at anything from the, the economy uh, to negotiations about uh, nuclear weaponry to negotiations on uh, the environment, China is mattering more and more, it matters also for things that we care about, such as raw material prices. Chinese demand is, is driving raw material prices, competition for uh, natural resources. So China is an overarching trend, and how, how China uh, responds to its new role in the world and its new responsibilities is something that uh, will influence the, the, the shape of the world in 2010 and beyond, perhaps more than anything else. As for the big event, I think there's no doubt that the biggest event in 2010 that we know in advance is the World Cup that will take place in South Africa in the summer. Uh, it's the first time the event has been held in the African continent. It's obviously a huge event for uh, South Africa and for Africa generally. Um, and there will be a cumulative television audience of perhaps 30 billion people. And of course, uh, every country thinks that it has a great, who's participating, has a, has a great chance of winning, not least Spain. I think it's, uh, it will be an inspiration to the rest of Africa, first of all, a source of great pride to see this Africa on the world stage. Perhaps also a little bit more complicated than that, a sense that uh, it will show how far ahead South Africa is of other countries in Africa. South Africa is really the country that is able to stage such a, a, a giant worldwide event more than any other country in Africa. So uh, it, it will be a bit of a mixed message for Africa, but overwhelmingly, I think, one of pride. Elsewhere, of course, there will be uh, different de impacts depending on the success of the national team. So you can imagine great euphoria and uh, a short-term boost to morale and perhaps even some political consequences for those countries that do well. 
uh, for those countries that do badly, it can have the reverse effect and, and create a sense of national gloom where, it, where it's a particularly uh, important event. Um, places like Brazil, uh, even my own country, Britain, where there are great passions involved in the game.